Alright, so today our hike is in Gutfila, which is just north of Two Lovers Point, near a lovely smelling, what's it called, <laughs> Waste, wastewater treatment plant, There's a power plant over there, but once you leave that area, you can get north of the beautiful area, and we've got lovely beaches, Lost Pond is near here, Shark's Pit, and so what we're going to be doing today is wandering in the jungle over here underneath this cliff, and we're going to be looking for Labby and artifacts, anything else we can find. All right. We're about to head into the jungle, um, and remember, it's always a good idea before you head into the jungle to ask for permission. Even if you don't really believe, maybe the top one doesn't really believe or care about you either, and so it's always good just to respect. And so it doesn't have to be in Chamorro, although it's nice if you know it in Chamorro. Do you have a standard uh, recommendation to something simple that people can do when they go into the jungle or say? Well, the one that, the one that I always use is, uh, well, the one that people usually use is Cuello de Nguela, Cocina Manbolo. That's the standard one, which basically means grandmother and grandfather, can we pass through your land? And so usually when I when I'm giving people when I'm like guiding people and stuff though, I say, you know, Menan and Mami, Kosinya and Nathan, Holam Hamguini, Yesti Tanunizu, Sa Malagu Zunabefanui, Esti, Esti Man Mama Tui, Ginef Pogunist in Luga. Which is basically, you know, ancestors please let us through your land because I want to show the beauty of your land to the people that have, that have come. Alright, All right, so we found our first laddy set of the day. And so, we walked along the first bay, went through the jungle a little bit. At the, at the start of the second bay, we turned into the jungle and started heading south. We passed a lot of coconut trees, and eventually we find a nice set. There's four standing, there's a fifth one over here. But yeah, this was definitely a some sort of laddie house. And uh, it's pretty cool. One of my favorite things about laddie is the differences in, in size. And so this one right here, I don't know why, I love the ones that are really skinny like this. Because you almost can't imagine that this would have held up a house or anything. Because then when you look like in Hagatnya at Angel Santos Park, you've got the really thick, huge ones. But it was probably very unrealistic for Chamorros to all have massive, thick laddie, especially because they were everywhere, and a lot of archaeologists say now that they probably weren't status-based, so that a lot of people of all classes used laddie. So then the difference would have been that more high-class people would have had taller, thicker ones, and other people would have had just thinner, smaller ones. But yeah, can you imagine beams going across here and the house there? All right, laddie side number two. And so this is a really cool one. Because as you can see, the tasa is still on top of it. And when you first see this one, you look at it and you think it's about to fall over. But if you actually touch it, you can feel how, how sturdy it is. It's pretty cool. And then a lot of us think of, a lot of the times you think of a laddie as basically being really smooth and polished. But then the cool thing about this is that the, the grain from the coral is still there. It's like an au natural laddie. And so this side is pretty cool. There's different laddie. Some the haligi are still standing in some places. They're scattered throughout here. And then over there, there's a nice big lusong. Which unfortunately got cracked in the middle. This is a really cool spot right here because when you go through the jungle here, you'll find a lot of loose laddie and you'll find some, in some cases, full sets, but usually about six. And so this one's pretty cool because you can still see the set of eight. So this would have been a longer, bigger house than most of the houses that would have been around here. And the eight are pretty, they're pretty well positioned. So you can almost imagine the structure that would have been here. And the laddie here are pretty large too. Especially when you look at this, this is the tasa right here. And then the hiligi are pretty solid. They're a lot thicker, heavier than the other ladi, than most of the other ladi around here. And so this was probably, I don't know, a wealthy, prominent family back in the day that they could afford 
to create laddie of this size and line up eight of them. Alright, this is, we've been hiking for like a couple hours now, and this is, we basically lost track of how many laddie sites. We've seen so many laddie, and so we're up in like the 40s and 50s now. And so this is one of the coolest things about just going through the jungle and exploring, is that if you're hiking from like point A to point B, then a lot of times you don't even see what's next to you, or only if it's like exposed right out in the open. But because we spent today wandering around the jungle, looking high and low for whatever artifacts we could find, we found so much today. And so that's one of the, the great things about it. if you come out to Hilaan is that it's not a it's not a it's not a very difficult hike. But if you just spend some time walking in the jungle along and the, the beach, you can hear the beach right behind us. If you just come into the jungle 20 or 30, 50 feet, but you should wear a shirt if you do that. You shouldn't go shirtless like I am right now. Then you can find so much back here, like this. Some of the most, some of the coolest Latin, still standing. Some pretty large ones too. Back that way, just about 100 feet away. It's a massive toss-up. And so, yeah, people should definitely come back here and check it out.